Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. We have a very special guest tonight. Please welcome back for the second time on the podcast. The second time, part two of Kateen Lee. Thanks for having me. Was that? Hey, dude. Hey, what's up? Was that? Was oh, that, that a was little, impressive. Is it, is it a bit too much? No, I loved it. Really? I feel like when I was a kid, I went through this phase where I wanted to be an opera singer. So that kind of like spoke to me. Really? Yeah. Oh, you were raised, you watched opera in the ho- in your household? You no, watched- absolutely not. I just was obsessed with singing because I loved Britney Spears and I thought I could sing. And I felt like the genre of opera kind of mm, spoke to me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I can't sing. So that didn't work out. Britney ended. She ended up losing her mind, didn't she? A little kind bit. Kind of, yeah. Where she shaved her head and yes, she the paparazzi was involved. She definitely had a mental yeah. breakdown. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you have that much attention, you're kind of bound to have a mental breakdown at some point. Do you think? When do you think that happens in one's career? Do you think they have to like get to a certain stature as far as popularity? Like, because it only yeah. happens to people, yeah, like your Justin Bieber's mm-hmm. or you know those type of yeah, like the Michael Jackson's yeah, of the world. or Will Smith. Yes, well, he had he had a big part in what's yeah. going on with him. Yes. What do you think about his apology video? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I didn't even watch his apology video. I feel like it came so much later that it almost like didn't matter anymore. Like the sentiment was nice, I guess. Yeah, but don't wait three years, buddy. Yeah. I mean, I also, how about apologize to Chris Rock? Yes, that's another thing. I feel like I'm not one of those people who expect celebrities to make a public apology for something if they wronged one specific person. Yeah. Like your apology does not matter to me because you didn't do anything wrong to me. Like go apologize to Chris Rock, which I believe he did. He had an op- well, not during the award show because he, when he got nominated, mm-hmm. his acceptance speech. Didn't he thank the Academy? Mm-hmm. How about the first thing you do is say, hey, I sorry for s- slapping you on stage, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know what it, you know went over me, what mm-hmm. took me over, but I'm sorry. It could also be in that moment. He probably didn't feel sorry yet. Maybe it took him some time to reflect. He was in a kind of this zone, right? He was in a... Definitely. There was fear and adrenaline involved. Mm-hmm. What do you think made him, compelled him to do such a thing? I'm really confused about that because the clip as Chris Rock was telling the joke and the camera panned over to him and Jada, you could see that Jada clearly wasn't laughing, but Will was. And then a second later, he starts walking up the stage. So I'm really confused because it didn't well, look. Well, because Will looked at, he yes. looked back to see Jada wasn't, he yeah. laughed. He was like, ah. then he looked and he's like, uh-oh. Yeah. Then he decided to go and do something about it. Yeah. It's so interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. I almost wish there was a camera that just stayed on them. So you mm. can see the whole yeah. sort of thing unfold. Like he gave her a look, realized she was upset. And then what happened from there? Because I feel like that's a big chunk of what happened that no one got to see. Now, yeah. And I agree with you. But not only that, that's something that's been just underneath it. That he, it's been building up. I yeah, think, I think he had a lot of pent up tension and rage in there yeah. that he's not allowed to let out because exactly. he's he has like a happy go lucky personality. That's kind of what he's known for. He's like silly Will Smith, happy go lucky guy. He's not, not known as that, like an aggressive guy or anything. And, and highly very, successful. Very very rich as yes. well. Yes, I feel like there's a lot of tension that he probably can't let go in a healthy way because everyone expects him to be happy go lucky Will Smith. Can I be honest with you? I agree yeah. with you too. I think that he he do, he's the leading man in his roles, right? Yes. In the movies, but I think yes. in reality, maybe he's not. He knows he's not the alpha dog. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like and in his household, knows, he probably like, he's isn't. He's the beta dude, but yeah. he kind of takes a s- step back and mm-hmm. he's like, oh. I got to stand up for my woman Mm -hmm. to prove I'm like the alpha dog, right? But at the same time, it could be a situation where 
maybe every he almost feels like responsibility is always on him for something like he's always to blame for something he's he's uh, you're right he's like you're the man he's so you have yeah. to stand up for me now so go and do something and then take all of the blame for it god that's a lot to that's take that's a on. lot of pressure to well, take well that's on. a lot to take on for yeah. any person for any human being yes absolutely you know what i'm saying that's you know God, I didn't. I didn't even mean to bring up Wilson. Oh, we love you though. We love your work. Love your work. Um, I love your old. Even like his rap career. Um, mm-hmm. Parents just don't understand. Mm-hmm. Summertime. Yeah, summertime. Very talented. He's talented. That's Extremely why it's hard because he's a talented yeah. guy. I don't want. I want him to like. I don't and he know. was likable for so long. Yeah. Where like you want to give him the benefit of the doubt of like maybe this is a one off. I don't know. I just like I. I want to like Will Smith. I want to too. Yes. I really do. I think the peak with me with him was uh, the pursuit of happiness. Oh my god, that, that made movie me made me cry. The, the I'm sorry that crying the, in the last theater. scene made me kind yes. of tear up a little bit. I'm like, yes. oh, that's great acting. Him in the bathroom made me cry with oh, his son, and he's yeah. like kicking the door because someone's knocking. Yeah. Oh my god. Or what about the end when he gets a promotion? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it's just that. It's that just like that silent, real, like acting, real acting. Yeah, I think. and it's yeah. so silent, but you see everything you need to. Like mm-hmm. the way he just kind of slow claps for himself. And is not, it's amazing. like even his nonverbal, like uh, communicate, like his his facial expressions, mm-hmm. and his demeanor. You know, like yeah. I, I think it was brilliant in that movie. Brilliant. That man can. So act we'll get your shit together, off. huh? <laughs> <laughs> see, both things can be valid. Get, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, you know, grab your kahunas, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do something about it. I mean, come on, man. You know. You have, he could, why can't you just dip, right? Like he mm. raised, you know, his son's successful. Yeah. And, I, you know, he's a, he's very successful. He's a rapper, mm-hmm. he's skateboard, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, everyone, all, everyone's successful. Yeah, they have enough mm-hmm. money. Can he just dip and just, how about take a break and just do your own thing for a yeah. while? Do you I, agree? I do think he can. I don't know if all entertainers want to take a break. I think a lot of people who are in the entertainment industry find a lot of validation from being in front of a camera or the spotlight. And so it's almost like, even though you don't need the money, it does feed your ego in one way or another. You know, I'm so glad you said that because, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's this, if it's LA, but Mm -hmm. it's just this never ending Mm -hmm. carnival. It's like, you know what I mean? A carousel. Yeah, definitely. It's just, they can't get off it. Yeah. And it's like, that's why you have to, um, you got to big up uh, Dave Chappelle, remember? He just full on bounced. Yes. Went to Africa, went mm-hmm. to Ohio, whatever. He just said, I, I can't take this. I'm yeah. out. Yeah. All right, let's let's get more positive with our uh, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to talk about. Um, I noticed the MTV shirt, uh, yeah. and it made me happy because MTV basically raised me. What was your favorite program on there? I mean, I can't lie to you. MTV rap. I mean, raps. MTV. Yeah. Yo, MTV raps. Yeah. And I mean, I'm like, I was nowhere near New York or, mm-hmm. but just something when I, it was every day at 4.30 PM, me and my, yes. my friend Anthony would re- mm-hmm. rush back from school to, to catch it, you know? Ed I Lover. would do that with TRL. Yeah. Or t- okay. Yeah. So that came later. And then yeah, that there came was later. Um, the cutting edge too. I watched yeah. 120 minutes. Yeah. But um, something about Young TV Raps, it, it just allowed me. I discovered a lot of groups that I know I would never discover. Like I mm-hmm. discovered like uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, Pete mm-hmm. Rock and Seal Smooth, uh, the Far Side, Wu Tang Clan, mm-hmm. Mob Deep. You you know Black Moon. It just goes yeah. on and on and on and on. And it it just I really fell in love with the music. I think. Mm-hmm. And that was like because I'm from like San Diego. It was mostly mm-hmm. like you know. It wasn't like urban at all. It was like, yeah. you know, I was on the wrestling team. And so it was like, if I didn't have that to like, like educate myself, like, oh, whoa, look at this, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, most of the kids, you know, like Tom DeLonge went to my high school, you know, like, yeah. you know, it's like there's mostly rocker surfer kids, mm-hmm. you know, but what about you? So you, I was really into, I watched TRL a lot, but I was during the time when MTV started to make a shift towards like reality television. So a lot of my upbringing with MTV was when they started doing like the challenge in the real world. Mm. That I was, was like, going to say the real world. I, I love, 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 love the challenge so much. And right. I love the real world. There was something. Who was so, the first cast on the real world? Was it po- uh, Tuck or Puck? Or I don't remember. I was, that was like a little before my time. I remember watching the challenge as the first few 
uh, shows I would really get into. And then I found out that the challenge was based off of the real world. And then I found out what the real world was. Mm. I just love any sort of show that has to do with people competing in competitions. Really? I love it so much because it reminds me of th- th- it's the same reason why I love The Hunger Games. Oh, like I love this right. idea of like a like fight or flight survival of the fittest. What do you think that is derived from? Like, is mm-hmm. that so? Do you think that's in your blood? Like the competition? Or something? I think because Asians are hella competitive too. You know, what I mean? hella competitive. You know, what I'm oh saying? my gosh. And plus, Absolutely. like, I want to get to your Vietnamese roots and yeah. stuff because I mean, maybe because you know, mm-hmm. as far as even my bloodline, I don't mm-hmm. know how far it dates back as far as what. Because yeah. back, if you want to go far, the lineage, yeah. I mean, there was clans and your house. I did a 23andMe a few years ago just to see, like, how far wait, wait, my is that, a, is that some kind of DNA? Yeah, it's a DNA test where it tells you, like, your lineage from a certain extent. So, like, generation-wise, like, what your genetic makeup but And is, you gave blood? and then uh, I believe it was spit. It oh, was, it was your yeah, saliva it was is your DNA. Yes. Okay, right. And, and so they swapped? They yeah. did a swab? I believe it was like a little tube that you spit into a certain line. You send it in and within like three weeks, they send you your results back. I got mine faster. I got mine within two weeks because it was pretty like spot on. It's just like 99.9% Vietnamese. And then the 0.01 changes between like Thai and Chinese. Really? Yeah. Can I tell you, because uh, my brother took one because mm-hmm. I guess his, po- they had a, a sponsorship that, that, like yeah. they, they specialize in that. So uh, he told his res- results to me and my mom in Hawaii. Mm. And uh, we found out that he w- t- we are 10% Japanese. <gasps> How do you feel about that? I'm okay. I'm are cool you okay with, with it? I'm okay with that because okay. I have Japanese homies. I'm yeah. good with it. But my mom, it didn't sit too That's well. That's triggering with for, her. Yeah, with the background of Korea well, and Japan. The history. Yeah. I mean, there's there's historical yeah. context here as far Absolutely. as Japan. I mean, this is d- d- even predating uh, um, Pearl Harbor. It, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they're involved with, with World War Two, but they also mm-hmm. people don't realize they conquered parts of China as well as Korea. Mm-hmm. I mean, they would take their the rice. Japanese were ruthless. Oh, oh they, they they were about ruthless. it. They, they were about it. Yeah, spared no lives. Yeah, so I was in the hotel and because me and my mom mm-hmm. had to share, you know. Yeah. Share a room, and I know she was sleepless one of the nights, and she was tripping yeah. hard. She was like, "Oh, you go, oh my, oh my, go!" You know, like she was like, yeah. "I'm like, I'm like, what's going on?" And she was trying to figure out what had mm-hmm. happened in the in the lineage. In the lineage. Yeah, something happened though. She's like trying to unpack trauma at that point. Yeah, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to get into like my hypothesis. Yeah. of what may have happened, mm-hmm. but I have a pretty good idea. You yeah, know? So you can it, make a guess. What wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, I would. Unfortunately, is someone kind of walking in the wrong neighborhood or yes. something, or someone going into their neighborhood? Or That's the I same thing with uh, Vietnamese people. If you find someone who's Vietnamese mixed with French, because the French colonized Vietnam, That's it's inter- the same thing. That's so every now and then, if I see like a Asian person and they're Vietnamese and French, I'm like, ooh, I think I could take a stab at what happened. Sorry. So, what is your take on? Hollywood's take on the Vietnam War because there's so many movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen them, you know, like uh, Full Metal Jacket yeah. to uh, Platoon and all these, you know, past yeah. movies. Like, is it how? What are your feelings towards See, Hollywood's take on it? I feel like I am a little too young for that generation of right. films. Mm-hmm. However, I do think it's a little interesting because, from my standpoint, the way I was taught all of this is like my maternal grandfather was in Vietnam fighting the war with Americans when they were in Vietnam trying to like spread democracy that's how it was told to me and my right. when the Americans pulled out my grandfather was actually taken and imprisoned for choosing to fight with the Americans rather than fighting with the co- fighting with the communists right. so he was taken as a prisoner of war for several years because really? he wanted democracy of course. and my mom's side of the family ended up getting after he was released from prison he was actually sponsored by a really nice white family here in America to come to America since he really? fought with the Americans how did yeah. he hook that up how did he get that uh, I, be- I don't know exactly how he found someone to like take him and sponsor him Mm -hmm. but because he was a veteran and Mm -hmm. he was fighting for democracy i guess somebody with like kind of higher up knew what he did and how he went to prison for that and was like hey you and your family can get out of here if you want and that's Mm -hmm. what they did wow 
it's fascinating that that actually yeah. wore fascinating. Yeah. So me. like, I, I don't um, like the perspective that some people have of like, there's always going to be racist people saying that like, oh, you're a fucking communist and this and that because Vietnam is currently a communist country. But it's like, no, my family fought and died and fled for democracy. Same thing with Cambodia. Yeah. With the Cambodia, you know, with, uh, yeah, with the Khmer Rouge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Pol Pot, they had yeah. a, And a lot of them migrated to like California, Long Beach or whatever. Yeah. You know, they had to flee, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just fascinates me. But you know what I think about w- that war? I know that there's resilience in... Mm-hmm the vietnamese people oh like my god even the, I, the people the soldiers on yeah, both sides on both sides because they had a whole tunnel i heard this that guerrilla warfare there's no joke in vietnamese people yeah they, they there's underground we are scrappy system. little people we're not the biggest amongst the asians but boy we're scrappy i mean they, we'll find our the way the patience of you mm-hmm. know these cats were like like in this nook, contorted in a contorted nook in a, in a hole yes and just waiting for Waiting a for soldier, days just yeah. for someone to come yeah. in that general that vicinity. resilience. Yeah. Because they, look, they won, mm-hmm. you know? They and, won. Yeah. <laughs> so that says a lot about yeah. the people, you know what I mean? We're always ready to fight. I feel like yeah. Vietnamese people are always ready to throw down. And it's like, you know, like my history teacher uh, used to say, you know, history repeats itself. I mean, yeah. look what's going on with Ukraine as well as far as you exactly. can't just... Go, I mean, they're going to fight back. It's their home. You know, yeah. they're not going to just dip and mm-hmm. they're going to put up a fight, you know. So I always found that interesting. But, uh, yeah, it's just scary. It fascinates me, but it scares me to death because where we're at, like the technology that we have as yeah. far as the, you know, of what could happen in future wars or whatever. Yeah, because I absolutely. think, wow, I think we're at a point now. I always kind of trip out like what if there's some technology that we don't even know about that maybe the aliens, like the, next the aliens w- gave us or something. I feel Something. like the next war is going to be biological warfare. I think that's what it is. I would. My boyfriend sent me an article the other day Can we about. Give him a shout out. Oh yeah, my boyfriend is uh, Stevie Blue Eyes. So shout out to my main man Stevie Blue Eyes. Good guy. Last time I last saw time you guys, he you were was, doing stand up. I was doing stand up. Brendan let me do a couple spots at mm, uh, the Ha Ha. The Ha Ha, and y'all came through, and your your boyfriend gave me mm. some real good uh, pointers, yeah. and he like he was really cool to talk to like yeah he, you he's know a good what I'm guy saying? he's a good yeah. guy yeah nice friendly man yeah friend, friendly dude he was very helpful towards mm-hmm. me and like his approach so yeah. i appreciate that so um maybe maybe he could come on here and oh we yeah could, he'd come through. we could we could plug uh his comedy stuff too as well right okay yeah yeah so i forgot what we're getting um was it the vietnam war was it stand up we said biological biological war yeah, yeah, oh, yeah he, yeah, was, yeah, he yeah. sent me this article about a group of scientists creating like this liquid like nanotechnology where it's like liquid bots that will move so if it enters your body it could try to like attack different like i guess viruses that are trying to like eat at your cells oh, but it's like it's like liquid robots yeah it's like the it's like terminator, terminator. It's like yeah terminator, it's the terminator it's like terminator 2 and that's remember that, that scary. Thing was liquid that yes yeah, yeah that's so scary not only that, like, do you hear the conspiracy of, like, having something like that, but then having 5G kind of, like, enable that or no. controlling your s- or something, like, messing up with your, you know, yeah. your senses. See, I feel like those whatever. are the type of threats where now I would much rather just, like, roll over and die. Because in my head, if there was a zombie apocalypse, I'm not trying to live and fight. I want to die. I'm going to off myself really yeah i'm gonna i don't even want but i don't want to get eaten so i almost want to like have a zombie's infected blood run through my system and then i turn i just want like the i don't want to (laughs) live in a world where i have a korean zombie series on netflix or something yes yes because that's maybe that's why we're so fascinated by watching those because you know we put ourselves in that position yeah i'm not meant to survive i don't want that i know my ancestors are meant to survive but i'm not I'm okay. Like even like if you were one of the last survivors, that would mm-hmm. be a hard life, right? Yeah, because you're scavenging all day, and every day's a threat. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Like so. watch The Walking Dead. I don't want yeah. any of their lives. No I shit. know you're surviving. Yeah, and I know you're doing as well as you possibly can, but I don't want that life for myself. Yeah, I, I want to be a zombie. Yeah. I want to be on the other team. Yeah, I, I would do that too. I would just get uh, on the winning side. Yeah, I would be a zombie, you know? and then I would just jump off the cliff or something. Yes. Yeah. Um. What are your thoughts on? Have you seen um, a Nope, Jordan's new movie? I have not oh, seen you Nope. You gotta check that out. I hear very good things yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, because Stephen Yoon's in it too as well. Oh, Stephen Yoon is so handsome. Oh my 
He's so handsome. I mean, can we? Can, I mean, Stephen. I Moon look at him and so I start shivering. Gorgeous. He is just chiseled. I mean, you know, I I just talked about this the other week. I ate dinner with him, and I my brother didn't notify me he was going to be at dinner. Yeah. And so I mentioned that I the whole because I was sitting mm. directly. This is how cl- I was close. Yeah. This close. So how the was the dinner? Time, I was just looking at his facial features. Isn't he beautiful? He's just a beautiful, just oh. He's a beautiful person. Beautiful man. man. Yeah. And I'm, I have a girl, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a heterosexual I feel like man. I'm a heterosexual appreciate. man, yeah. but it, you got, beauty is beauty. Beauty is beauty. Handsome Absolutely. is handsome. Yeah. Objectively Exa- speaking. Yeah. Yes. But it's something, yeah. Just though, it, it, he's, he's chiseled. Chiseled. Eyes, even his must, I mean, beautiful like mustache. beautiful man. Yeah. God took his time with Stephen Yoon. What was that? <laughs> I think God took a little extra time with Stephen Yoon. Can I give, can I play a little devil's advocate here? Okay, yes. so let's say. You you run into Stephen Yoon like uh, like um and yeah. <laughs> I know just, where this I is mean, going. Yes. This is, okay. Steve, yeah, yes, Steve, yes, you yes, don't yes, have yes, to listen yes. now. This is just a hypothetical. Don't it's worry. I won't, I, I won't send him this all right, link. All right. It's don't fine. send him this. Yeah, we won't I'll clip it or anything. Ju- absolutely okay, honest. Okay. But you run into you know yeah. you're out there. You know you're with Chin. Mm-hmm. You guys yeah. are having Korean food. Shout out to Chin. Shout out to Chin. You guys are having a dinner. And then you bump into Stephen Yoon and you guys kind of shoot the shit. And then hey, and then somehow he's going through a divorce or something. And then he goes, hey, we should get coffee sometime. Yeah. And then that kind of evolves into something mm-hmm. else where it's like you're not only just having coffee with him now. You guys are like kind of starting to date. Yeah, there's like tension there now. There's tension, but then you you still are th- yeah. in this thing with Stevie Blue Eyes. Yeah. So what do you do in that scenario? I think be honest, though. Be, we, to yeah. be completely honest, this I is feel Steven like Yoon. one. I know, I know. Just keep that I feel as like context. I feel like I'm not the type of person to go do anything without telling my boyfriend. I am not someone who asks for his permission, but I'm definitely not hiding anything from See, him. You got a good one, Stevie Blue Eyes. Like today, like I wouldn't just like randomly come here and not tell him what I was doing for like the next few hours. And he was cool with it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I I w- met, but that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I already met him yeah. and I'm a cool. We had that the bro yes. moment. Like but the he's respect. also such a he's not possessive or overprotective of me at all. He's very much like you are your own person. Is you that have a turn your off? Own. No, that's a turn on. I no, love. Is that a turn off if the person's overbearing and where you going? Oh, a huge turn off. Who's, oh, who's my God. Texting you? I know certain girls do like that trait in a man because they feel like they they like a man who's a little jealous, who's a little on edge. But I don't like that. I mm. really don't. I think that is so incredibly unattractive in a man. Does it show, because we- does it it show, show weakness? It sh- not just weakness, but like insecurity that you don't feel like you are confident in who you are as a person mm. enough to let me live my life. There's nothing mm. more attractive than someone who's confident in who they are, regardless of what you look like, what you do for a living. Mm-hmm. Just like confidence of like, I know what I bring to the table. Like, mm. go live your life. Mm-hmm. So I know you're not doing anything. Can like, you can a that. man kind of be fronting like kind of like I think you can tell when someone's so you like, can't trying fake to the fake funk it when it comes to confidence. I feel like you could try to fake it as well as you can because I do think you could fake it till you make it. But can you but see through it? I eventually? think you can see through it. Honestly, mm. I do feel like you can see through someone trying to fake confidence. Mm. And I never hate or criticize people who are trying to fake it. Because I think I had to fake it for a long time, too, until I felt more confident mm. in who I was. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for a really long time, I was insecure about absolutely everything. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to the scenario. But like with Steven, you'd, I feel like I would have to tell <laughs> okay. my boyfriend, like, oh, I'm going to go grab coffee with my friend Steven. Okay. You may know him from the show The Walking Dead. I'm going to be here. And if over time that keeps happening, I feel like he would eventually bring it up like hey you're hanging out with this guy a lot and it's like yeah well let me let me finish my scenario because yes. i'm gonna add some okay some add some spices. details yeah i'm gonna add some spice it up it. make it hard for so me. on the fourth coffee yeah. date or or just meet up yeah you notice that he kind of sits a little bit closer to you mm-hmm. okay and then, <laughs> and then he uh you have your hand on your hot tea or coffee mm-hmm. and then he somehow brushes yeah. against your hand and like... And that's not an accident. I know. That's why I'm yeah. bringing it up. And so what... Yeah. Do you... Would your adrenaline meter be kind of off the charts? Yes. It's Stephen Yoon. I mean, this like, is Stephen Yoon. Absolutely. Yoon, okay? absolutely. It's Stephen Yoon. Okay. I'm d- I feel like my heart's racing now thinking about yeah. it. Like I... 
Yeah, I would yeah. Ab- like. I mean, I would absolutely start to like. Bu- 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 yeah. Like, I I don't think I can deal with it. And then, oh, can I add another? Yes, uh, add, add another some more kind of a different yeah, kind of detail it. to it. Yeah. But then, Paint a picture. not only that, he puts his arm or hand on mm-hmm. your the back of your neck and and starts like mm-hmm. like kind of like a. That's nice. Yeah. Like a like a <laughs> kind of like a back like a neck rub or yeah, something. You know yeah. Yeah. I mean? And he takes it there. Yeah. What do you do then? I feel like I because your defenses are down at this point. Here, this is if I'm being completely honest, I feel like I, mean, I wouldn't come on. pull his arm off of me, but I also would tell him like, "Hey, I have a boyfriend." Whoa, you would. Yeah, but I wouldn't pull the arm See, away Stevie from me. Blue Eyes. Yeah, I would let him know I have a man. That's loyalty, Stevie Blue Eyes. But the, I'm I am not removing that hand. Wait I am waiting for Steven to remove the he, hand. So he would have to remove so the like, hand. So like, yeah, like hand is on me like this, and I'm like, "Hey, I have a boyfriend." <laughs> <laughs> So you would be doing like Madonna Vogue, like no, like you'd be like this it? is like pretend this is Steven Yoon's hand. Yeah, like, he's giving me a little neck rub. Okay. I'm like, hey, I have a boyfriend, but I'm not like taking his arm off of. Me. Okay, can I throw yeah. another? Yeah, yeah, a detail. Yeah, yeah. Okay, throw a detail. While this is happening, yes, he takes his other hand. All right, just hear me <laughs> out. <laughs> just hear me out. Hear me out. He takes his other hand yeah. and places it. Oh, that's too much. That one I have to remove. I have to remove. There you go. Here, and here's Cause that's, because like that's he's crossed the line he's there. He's crossed the line and I feel like you're less attractive to me then. Okay, right. Because even it's like though, why the hell are you laying the, a hand? Yeah, even th- if this it's is Steven Mr. Yoon here. Cuz I feel like my idea the, a big part of why I feel like Steven Yoon is so attractive is that I think he's very respectful. I would imagine. Oh, dude, he's a family man. Exactly. That's he the has attraction. a kid. He that's has a wife. Yeah. I, I love But nice, my scenario, like, this is a different yeah. this is this a multiverse. Is Steven, yeah, this, this is, is a, a different reality. Yes. In my in this reality yeah. he's going through a divorce mm-hmm. they're doing the custody battles mm-hmm. yeah. and now he's basically a single yeah. guy that's yeah. this is the whole yeah. different scenario so I it's not like the steven no. you know yeah in this universe that's not it's the a steven different Yoon i want oh I you want, want the steven real Yoon. steven Yoon. yeah i want the real steven Yoon, the like wholesome family because that's what it makes him attractive in the first yes, place because i love nice like truly genuinely like nice guys like not that bullshit people say where it's like nice guys finish last that's why no girls like me the, like real nice guys but that saying exists for a reason it exists for only- a reason because pe- nice guys who say guys who say that are not nice guys they're manipulative as fuck pretending to be a nice guy wait, if you uh, wait are a nice minute. you wait, don't say have to that say again because my intern just agreed with see you. she knows she knows exactly wait, wait, what hold i'm on, talking hold on. about say that one more time into the yes yeah, because that. real wait, no ni- go way go okay. like from 30 okay, from seconds what? 30 seconds ago say okay, that again so i don't want steven yoon who is putting his hand on my inner thigh because that's no longer a nice guy because mm-hmm. nice guys don't do shit like that mm. they don't mm-hmm and nice guys don't have to go out and tell people that they're nice guys. Mm. You just know. Yeah. Like, I know you're a nice guy. You've never had to tell me, hey, I'm a nice guy. You're just, that's. I just know you're a, a nice guy. Exactly. Because and this is a hypothetical, by the yeah. way. I just want to let the viewers yes. and listeners. Steven Yoon, Steven Yoon has, is, done no has never done anything wrong. I will not. This ex- is just a hypothetical. Mm-hmm. This is like in a multiverse. Yes. If you were, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I will yeah. never allow any Steven Yoon slander. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great but dude. Great he's guy. doing great but work. But in this multiverse. He's a great actor. We he's love going Steven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. I just feel like nice. Gu- I love nice guys, mm-hmm. and men who have to say that they're a nice guy usually aren't nice guys. Same thing with like girls. If a girl says, "I'm not crazy," usually she's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, why would you have to say that? Right, I get that. Yeah, because yeah, they already ha- they're on the defense. Yeah, about they're already it. defensive yeah. about it. So I mentioned before the podcast, I go, mm-hmm. "Oh, can we talk about relationships?" Yeah. Because I'm in a relationship, and uh, and we're both in interracial. In, we're both in interracial relationships. Yes. So my girlfriend is. White. Yes. And Steve, Steve Blue Eyes is a white man. Yes. So we're on the opposite yes. ends of the the same scenario, just flipped or flip, flipped around. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like for a long time, something I hate about interracial relationships mm-hmm. was that you could always correctly, back in the day, I say, mm-hmm. assume that the girl was Asian and the guy was white. I would and say I feel 85, like 90% of those scenarios is a white man with an Asian woman. Yeah. And it's the most accepted by the, is, as well. Yes. It's the most accepted I feel like because the longest, for the longest time, people desexualized Asian men. And they didn't find Asian men attractive or manly. Hollywood but it's like, had a lot to do with that. They too. had a lot to do with it. And now K-pop is popping and you couldn't find a woman on this like God's green earth who isn't into BTS. 
Can I? You know what's crazy is my Asian bu- men are fucking killing it now. My, and my I love buddy that. sent me an article of women, yes. Western women, yes, going to Korea, yes, and looking for Korean love. I feel like because Korean of a men. Netflix, it's like th- there's a term for it, like mm-hmm. some Netflix mm-hmm. syndrome or something yeah. where uh, there's so many K Korean dramas or mm-hmm. something where women. They're they're in this fantasy world. They're like, oh, I gotta go out there to find because mm-hmm. they're 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 watching these these Netflix mm-hmm. Korean dramas. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is crazy. But also, like, hell yeah, I well, feel like so because growing up, I feel like I grew up in San Jose and I grew up around a lot of other Asian people and a lot yeah. of Mexican people. So oh, yeah. that was kind of like everything I knew. And no one from San Jose really ever felt like. Like Asian guys specifically, like Asian guys never saw being Asian as like a bad thing. Like, oh, I couldn't get girls because I'm Asian. Like Asian guys were the shit where I'm from because that's all. There's only Asians and Mexicans. Yeah, it, there but was not where I was from. Exactly. That's we'll see why I was, exactly. around, I was raised around white. people. Exactly. And I feel like that's where I feel like this idea of like Asians, Asian guys aren't hot started to pop off in like mostly like non-Asian communities. I feel like. Asian guys are some of the hottest men in this world. Yeah, but they the were portrayed hottest. that way. Yes, they I weren't. Mean, they weren't portrayed that history way. And even That's Hollywood, why. Hollywood, you yes. have your long duck dongs and mm-hmm. your short rounds and all yeah. that. The only guy that they really gave it up to was Bruce Lee, mm-hmm. and then it went down to Brandon as well. You yeah, know, he had he got a pass. Yeah, but it's like, in the, but the thing is, in order to be accepted, like. You had to know, know kung fu or something. You had kind of to be the most something. masculine version of exactly the Asian man like chiseled and yeah. that, like be able to yeah. kick ass. You yeah, know? but it's like now. I'm happy it's not like that anymore. You think it's changing? Definitely. Oh my god! If I feel like with this younger generation, maybe not in our generation, but definitely the younger generation, there's such a high level of like the like asian representation mm-hmm. on the internet on television in comparison to what we grew up with mm-hmm. where now a lot of these girls are looking at k-pop groups like that's the hottest guy i've ever seen in my life like these girls go nuts for k-pop groups. Well, my mom does as well yes and good for her she knows I mean, what's there's up more pictures of them than her own yeah. two sons in her home you know mm-hmm. and it's she's obsessed with v and all yes. yeah she's Ex- obsessed with them yeah but she like, even colored her hair like purple <gasps> yeah she? oh she went she's going on <laughs> love it <laughs> she's going in on that <laughs> yeah she loves yeah. those boys yes everybody loves does them. now and i feel like that helps Look, with how people see asian men i love that i'm okay with that but mm-hmm. as far as from a musical standpoint I'm not too into the music music. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, and that's fair. You're not into, like, pop music. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. like... Uh, You're not into that. Yeah, butter. I'm just like... Uh, you know what it seems like? It seems like they don't even know what they're saying. It's like they have a ghostwriter. Yeah. Just say this. Yes. And they're like, oh, okay. And they yeah. just spew it out. Mm-hmm. And they, But it's because it's a hit. It's like they try yeah. to make the most popular hit song or yeah. something. That's just my opinion. Hey, mm-hmm. keep doing your thing. They're mm. huge. I mean, oh, massive. They're like the Beatles. They literally yeah, they're like, are the Beatles, like the Beatles, and that blows my mind. Uh, but that's yeah. my exact point. Mm-hmm. I r- actually love their the Beatles' music. Yeah, they wrote some damn good songs. Mm-hmm. You know, right? Yes. I don't. Know, that's just my own thing. I yeah. mean, I'm glad that they're getting recognition. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, I'm just saying. Do you ever get like weird looks, or do they like as far as you being in an uh, interracial relationship with no, Stevie Blue Eyes? I feel like. Being an Asian girl with a white guy, it's almost like assumed sometimes. So, like, I never get weird looks ever. I feel like I've got it easy in comparison. I, I've noticed. I feel like I've side. had weirder looks dating an Asian guy than I do dating a white guy. What? Because during my time at uh, Fire and the Kid when I was working there and people yeah. found out I was, I was oh, at the time. Oh, shut up. Yeah, okay. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to, yeah but I was up. with my uh, ex-boyfriend at the time and he was Filipino. And I used to get so many DMs of people talking about how it was like, oh, like I can treat you right and like this Asian guy doesn't know what he's doing and this and that. He would get Will you so get DMs, much. DMs like that? I used to get such like terrible DMs From about my dudes? ex-boyfriend. Usually, yeah. <laughs> I mean, their fan base is mostly white, oh so like my. just by like numbers. So was. they would just try. To, oh, they would yeah. be blocking that way. Yeah, and they'd oh. always like it was never them trying to hit on me in a regular way. It was always something to do with like putting down my ex boyfriend because he was Asian, 
And they wow. almost felt like it was like a layup that he was Asian with this like Asian girl. Like, oh, I could take his girl because like he's Asian. He's not going to do shit. Like, he's not hot. Oh, I'm like, is... how fucking dare you? Oh, no, I would put How up... fucking dare oh, you? No, I would have to say something to that. I mean, if oh, my God, I hated yeah. it. Because I, you know, on the flip side, like I noticed like not so much because my my girls in Pennsylvania, it's mm. cool out there. We it's, everything's been cool. It's yeah. not, but we sometimes take trips to Arizona. It's mm-hmm. in Arizona where do you get weird looks? Oh yeah, we were in walking through Target, and um, it was looks like where they'll do a second take. They'll go. Mm-hmm. You know what that reminds me of? Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like they, it's it's one of those things where they're like, "Whoa, what's going on there?" Mm-hmm. It and reminds I, me of an I interview noticed that. with Ryan Seacrest where he was talking to Stephen Yoon and his co-star on The Walking Dead. Uh, I forgot what her name was, but like beautiful white woman mm-hmm. is his love interest in Stephen Yoon, clearly a mm-hmm. Korean man. Mm-hmm. On a radio show with Ryan Seacrest, Ryan Seacrest like, so how do you guys deal with like uh, people thinking that like you're a couple? That's so funny, right? Mm-hmm. And they both, both Stephen and his co-star are like, why is that funny? He's like, because like in real life, you guys would never... And there's like that insinuation, like you guys would never be together in real life. And oh, I was like, that's accepted yeah, or something. Or n- it's not a common thing. Or not just a common thing. It made it the context a taboo or something. The context of like what he was saying made it seem like he was saying, "There's no way you, as an Asian man, land this hot white girl." Ooh, and I was ouch. like, "What the hell?" You know what's that's crazy. And like Stephen Yoon. Yeah. Steven Yoon? Yeah. You're telling me the hottest fucking Asian man couldn't get a beautiful white woman if you, he wanted well, to? You know what's even crazier? What are you saying about all the other Asian men? But you know what's crazier about that? Your below average white woman, they they feel entitled to like, oh, I could get Steven Yoon. Yeah. Isn't how that weird you? how that's weird on the contrary? It's like they feel that their mindset is like, oh, yeah, well, I could date him. Like, yeah. I could get him. Do you think but this guy's thing? at the top. He's like that's like me mm. saying whoever the hottest mm. what woman out there, like, yeah, I could, you know, whoever's out there. It's uh, like a fucked up math system of like, yeah. well, no, I'm it's here, like the entitlement. So like, yeah. It's yes. like you really think that? They're like, right? yeah. It's it's really it's really odd to me. Like they actually think this. Like yeah. a, like a average, below average woman mm-hmm. thinks like, uh yeah, well, I guess he would do. I could you know, it's yeah. like it's almost like, wow, you feel like you're entitled to that or you mm-hmm. have enough to offer him or something. Yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. But it, it yeah. So what is that look? Is it that second take is like disbelief? Like like that thing in Target mm-hmm. where because it yeah, it happened several times. I not don't know just if at it's Target. Disbelief or just people are just like not being used to seeing something like that. Yeah. I don't know exactly what it is, because a part of me I don't wanna always think that someone has like bad intentions or someone's like inherently trying to like like be racist but so, like, i'm not saying it's a racist thing but it's by just any like, means it could you, that could be could a be, part of it like too, i don't want to assume it's ever that i think sometimes people genuinely haven't seen like a combination like that in their lifetime i think in their eyes because i always try to look at it in another outside of myself mm. maybe in their eyes it's like it's this uh beautiful white woman and then i'm like a, with the alien gray <laughs> what do you mean alien gray <laughs> No, I'm saying I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see it yeah. from there. I was like, what if that they look at me like like you're a great like alien. I'm a like I, it's that foreign. That's what yeah. I meant. I mean, I didn't mean it literally. Yeah, but I mean, meant it metaphorically. <laughs> like, dang that that doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, that's a little gray, and that's. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like seeing a Rottweiler and a Chihuahua yeah, have a baby. It's yeah, like, exactly. How does that That's work? That's a better analogy. Logistically, yeah, yeah. It's like those two different breeds yeah. don't mix. Yeah. But you know, ironically, dude, look at Bruce Lee's trajectory. His mm-hmm. wife was a white woman mm-hmm. and they had Brandon Lee. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Bruce Lee was also a quarter German, wasn't he? That I don't know. I don't know. He could be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know he's Chinese. I, I mm-hmm. don't. I don't know if he was. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he wasn't. But my the point being is like, oh, it's like in order for people 
to accept that you have to be at Bruce Lee's status for it to be okay. Yeah. Like, okay, it's Bruce Lee. Yeah. He was in Enter the Dragon. He's the Kung Fu guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just found it interesting because it's like... I feel like like it's not really like that anymore. I was just... And this is a testament to real life. Mm -hmm. I went to Boston maybe... I was in Boston a few days ago. I just got back. And while I was there, I saw so many Asian people, like, included like Asian... Asian dudes? Asian dudes with white women and black women. I love that. Fucking killing it. I love that. Asian men just walking around just like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is my girlfriend and what? Like That's dope. Like it was so normal. It wasn't like this weird thing of like you know sometimes when you see like an Asian girl and a white guy, there are certain situations where you're like, Oh, he has an Asian fetish, not like he likes her and she happens to be Asian. Like this is a fetish. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? My brother's got a joke about that. Yeah, Yeah, like like, there are those certain type of couples where you're like, oh, this is like something else. Yeah. This isn't strictly like love. Well, you would be able to see, um, yeah, you could definitely see those scenarios like like, like a front beer. Like and it's usually like an older dude. white yeah, dude, like, yeah. really young looking, not the like best Asian, attra- not, not attractive, the be- not attractive, a yes. little overweight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're like, okay, I know what's going on. Yeah, there but while as I was well. in Boston, it wasn't any really? of that. It's this literally was just like normal couples. Yeah, yeah, like literally three days ago. Do you think that uh, people kind of like look at maybe like a uh, Asian with a Latina or Latino mm-hmm. with Asian, you know, that that's more accepted, mm-hmm. right? I feel like that's more, I feel like to me, that's more accepted because where why, I'm why, now, why is that? Especially that's like, where I grew up, what I grew up seeing. Is that a Cali thing or a LA thing? I or? feel like it's a, maybe, right? maybe. Yeah. Cause I will see California does have a large influx of Asians and Mexicans. Mm-hmm. And so I saw that mix a lot more than like, say like a black and white couple. There really weren't too many like black kids or white kids at my school. There were some, but right, not a lot. Right, right. It was predominantly Asians and Mexicans. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. And like yeah, I yeah, have yeah. like half, like mixed half Asian, half, uh, half Vietnamese, half Mexican. Have you dated, uh, um, have you dated a uh, Latino men? No, oh my god, I always wanted to date Latino men. I feel like they were my first love. There might love. be some Latino men watching this, and they, yeah. they're like, oh man, I missed my shot or something. Honestly, you guys did, because when I so, was I mean, growing up... Sorry, she's taken Stevie I'm Blue taken. Eyes, that Stevie I'm Blue taken. Eyes girl. But you know what By I'm a saying? By gringo, yeah. but it's okay. But you would be um, open to it. Oh my god, absolutely. When I was younger, I used to only have crushes on... like these like beautiful like mexican boys when i was a kid really and i never ever got a chance to date any of them because i was too much of a tomboy and they didn't like that they liked girly girls so it was always friend zone so you grew up as a tomboy oh yeah big tomboy like Like what because you do you have a sister and a brother right yes i have you're in the middle I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah, I'm the oldest. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then your brother's the youngest. Yes, he's the baby. He's, he's like the baby. Uh, 11 or 12 right now. All right, can I give him a shout out real yeah, quick? Yeah, give him a shout out. What's His name's Curtis. What's up to my main man, Curtis? <laughs> Keep doing your thing, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Is he into sports? Like, is he? Uh, I'm trying to get him into MMA, honestly. What about wrestling? I would love that. Just anything. Uh, he because started w- talking to me recently about how he's been like, getting bullied in school and just like there's like a mean kid uh, and i feel like he also i don't know what his name is but like i told him i was like yeah am i gonna punch a 12 year old because i will yeah yeah, i'm the same size as a 12 year old i'll do it because i i would i wrestled since sixth grade yeah ranked second in the state Mm -hmm. i saw your the photo you posted recently one san diego section Mm -hmm. three years in a row if you would give me an opportunity just spend a Mm -hmm. week with your brother yeah i could train him in um takedown defense mm-hmm. takedowns duck unders arm drags double legs mm-hmm. high crotch i mean yeah because i come from a, a lineage of a good yeah. wrestling system in poway there yeah so i think if i had a week or even mm-hmm. like a week and a half two weeks i could get him where yeah where he, he would feel be. confident like if this bully tried yeah. to come at him he would at least know how to take him down yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying because I don't know the stand up the boxing yeah. part, but as far as the grappling part, I could yes. really aid him in that sense. That'd be great for sure. I mean, what, so Curtis, right? Mm-hmm. Curtis, if you're open to it, what grade is he in? Uh, I believe he's going to seventh grade now. Oh, that's a great. I started wrestling in sixth grade. Yeah. So if he's open to it, mm-hmm. is, does he have a wrestling curriculum at his school? I don't believe so. The biggest thing is I just want him to get into a program where I feel like he's getting adequate exercise to just like release some steam. And wrestling, then to like make is, friends. wrestling is perfect for yeah. that. Not only that, it could get him skilled. Yeah. And this is a life skill. I mean, he, yeah. he'll, because wrestling, and you said MMA, right? 
Yeah. I just want to put them in something. Half of MMA is wrestling. Mm -hmm. Is literally wrestling. It's takedown, takedown defense. It's a part of the game. Yeah. So if he starts this early Mm -hmm. and and builds up like fundamentals. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I could seriously, I mean, I could teach him some stuff. Yeah. So Curtis, um, I've always kind of wanted to do that. I know maybe I Mm -hmm. probably missed my boat boat there, but it's like because since I kind of did choke at state, I'm like. And someone commented on this too. They're like, "You should te- You should be an assistant coach or something." Yeah. I don't know if it's too late for that, but I it's don't like, think it's too late. But I'm thinking, um, I don't know. I've always wondered. I wonder what it would be like if I at least like was an aide or something like yeah. an assistant. Assist, assistant. Yeah, you can always volunteer coach. at like a yeah, local, like a local. There's like, no. I don't want to tell you my the address mm-hmm, here, but there's yeah. no the high school around here. Yeah. I don't think has a program. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, got it. but I'm sure you're. Your uh, brother has a wrestling program. What's the main high school where he lives? Mm, can't say that either. Okay, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> okay, okay. But anyway, so Curtis, yeah. if you want to learn, I could like you know, I yeah. would be more than glad to like, mm-hmm. like teach him, um, him like ropes. take takedowns, yeah. takedown defense, mm-hmm. how to, you know, how to grapple, how to grab people, wrist control, yeah. neck, con- you know, what I'm saying yeah. it, it's there's yeah, I I still watch it. Yeah. Do you still watch? Uh, do you watch very it? i would say very casually i feel like i went through a period of time where i was obsessed with it watched every single fight that was coming out always illegally streamed it because i had no money at the time it's expensive and then, it's expensive mm-hmm. uh but now i can wash casual casually like, what are, are you paying attention to the female fighters yes so what are your thoughts on amanda nunez I can feel, anyone beat I, her? She's unbeatable, right? Well, she got beat. By, yeah, by uh, uh, Juliana. Juliana, but, but this rematch? recent one, she won she, in a spectacular fashion. Oh, five rounds. I love rounds. Amanda Nunes. I feel like there's something about her that's very like, I don't know. I just love everything about Amanda Nunes. She's badass. She's a badass. I, I feel like I look at her and I think like great mom, like very wholesome. Yeah, they're both mothers. Yeah, yeah. Juliana has a kid too. Uh, yeah. But Rose Namajunas too. That's my yes. favorite out of them. Thug Rose. Oh, Thug Rose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So are you? So I mean, so you used to. Who was your favorite fighter all, uh, all around? My favorite fighter. Yeah, be honest about. It. Let's let's get to was the Brian Ortega. And to this day, my boyfriend is always so like. He, He's got some beautiful eyes too, doesn't beautiful he? Beautiful eyes, beautiful <laughs> eyes. Jesus Christ! But like, I really loved watching <laughs> videos of people roll like jujitsu. Oh. I used to like, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 not yeah. like e. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I know you're saying jujitsu, yeah. and, and yeah. boy, that's an art form in itself. It is. It? Yeah. It's a beautiful and he, art he's form. New, he's well versed in that. He's very it? well versed in it. Uh, uh, I used to watch Gracie jujitsu. Yes, a lineage of that. Yes, right? yeah, I yeah, got yeah. into watching people roll while as in college because I had a friend who was a part of like a jujitsu club. I didn't know anything mm-hmm, about mm-hmm, it at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I watched some videos thinking like, oh, maybe I'll hang out with her and like mm-hmm. do whatever they do. Mm-hmm. And then I found videos of Brian Ortega was like, oh, wow, he's so good. Like he was doing like one of the first videos I saw was him doing like a flying triangle. Like he ran at someone and then like choked them out mid air. Yeah. And I was like, how can someone do that? That's amazing. And I've like loved him ever since. I will always watch his fights and my boyfriend gets very uncomfortable he's like oh you gonna watch your little boyfriend <laughs> i'm the like thing about him you know why i like ortega it because what? even his body type he's mm-hmm. not that but he's like skinnier he's like yeah. a skinnier dude mm-hmm. and um he and not only that his background is he's similar to like the diaz brothers yes where he was around Same, like a similar ch- vibe like Cholo yeah. gang influences yeah. and elements like mm-hmm. gangs that like around him where he chose a different route. Yeah. He chose more of a positive yeah. route to do the MMA thing yeah. opposed to that other lifestyle. I think it's also, I always found Mexican men attractive. So I saw him was like, yep. Um, yep. Are you, what about like cholos and stuff? Were you ever, I feel is like there attraction cholos, there too? There's a little bit, right? I feel like I don't necessarily have like a sexual attraction to but them, they're but they're tough. such like, not even tough. I feel like the cholos I grew up with, they always, because I was kind of like a shy, like tomboy, kind of like nerdy kid. I'm like into like Game of Thrones and shit. Yeah. Like I'm in, oh, like, too. I wanted to be like an Egyptologist when I was a oh, kid. Like, so you were a tomboy and you were kind of nerdy. Yeah, nerd yeah, kid. yeah, definitely. <laughs> but like the, like the cholos always kind of, 
kind of saw me as like, oh, like the nice, like quiet Asian girl. But there were some at your school. Yeah, there were uh, some. Not very much. I lived in. Tell like, me about the Cholo kit. Like what were the they, Cholo the kits? They were always so fucking funny. They were the funny. They were always like the class well, clowns. They always, didn't like, have hair though, did they? Not really. Bit. Always like kind of like buzzed. Buzzed a Raiders yeah. something. Either always Raiders like or a Dodgers. Raiders. Yeah. Always right, ra- so, well, like I'm from the Bay Area, so it was like either Raiders or 49ers. It was one or the other. But and then Dickies. Dickies, the high sock, the Cortez's. High sock. So they yeah. would rock it like. Yeah. I mean, like, is this a pretty good. The higher the socks, the closer they to They would God. rock it like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah, basically. And oh, Chucks, too? Mm hmm. They'd either do so. The, the, the shoes Chucks. would either be Cor- Nike Cortez's mm-hmm. or the uh, Chucks. Yeah, the old school Chuck Taylors. Okay, but then they had some slide. Wouldn't they wear sliders as well? Mm-hmm. The, uh, what was it? The Fila's or the Adidas ones? I forgot which one. But they would rock those with the socks, right? Yeah. Yeah. I always felt like they were so kind and funny. Mm -hmm. So I have a very soft spot for Cholos, honestly. (laughs) I don't have like a sexual attraction, but I see them almost as like a big brother figure. I'm like, oh, I feel safe here. But there's poetry within their their, their whole lifestyle. Like, Mm because there's poetry in the sense that like some of their tattoos are poetic. Like you have the... The, the clown mask of the sad mm-hmm. clown yeah. or the happy clown. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They're, definitely. Or they, they really love their women, too. Mm-hmm. They'll have, I mean, there's all, probably a lot of tattoos mm-hmm. of their um, their novia. Yeah. You know, or their, uh, their, um, their mi amor. Yeah. You know? It's like the, the They're tattoos. such romantic men. I love that. Not only that, I think the best tattoos are like cholo style tattoos. Yeah, you're I, into that? I think that they're just so, there's something they cool are dope. about them. Yeah. Whether it's like, a clown mask mm-hmm. or a sad clown yeah. or a, a, a tattoo of their woman where it has mm-hmm. like Anita por vida or something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Or something where it's like showing their mm-hmm. love to their woman. You yeah. know what I mean? I had an uncle who went to prison and he went to like a predominantly like uh, Mexican prison. And I guess he liked uh, everyone's tattoo so much. And you know how, like, the Cholos would have, like, Mexico or something? Like, on like their they, stomach? Yeah, on their stomach. Uh, my uncle came out of prison and he got a tattoo that said Vietnam in the same way, in the same, like, lettering and oh, everything. Like the because whole, he was around a bunch of Cholos. Letters, yeah. Like the whole block letters. Yeah. So like, I just thought that was dope. But that's like, yeah. so that shows you how much <laughs> of an influence that has even yeah. in the prison yard or something. Yeah. Or, I mean, so what I was he in prison Mexican. for? I mean, that must be scary being a non-Latino uh, or non-black. I was too Or white young. when you're uh, the others. Because mm-hmm. they're labeled. If you're not black, la- Latino, or white, you're mm-hmm. uh, other. the other. Miscellaneous, you're other. yes. Right? Yeah. So it must be scary being the other. I would assume so. I was a little too young to know what he was put away for. I feel like a lot of the adults in my family kind of hid why he was away. They kind of said like, oh, like he's out like working somewhere. He moved this and that. Right. Uh, and then he came back and suddenly he had like this Vietnam tattoo on him looking like That's a cholo. Crazy. And I was like, oh, he looks dope though. He looks dope. And he was originally from Vietnam. So he's a fob. He's like a fob with Mexican tattoos. But he's now. the others. He would be. Yeah, he was, he was others. But yeah. I feel like because he had that tattoo i feel like he was adopted by the mexican guy if anything it's like that movie american me there's that one one. asian there's a one japanese (laughs) there's a one japanese guy in there that was accepted by la emin Mm -hmm. the one guy you know Mm -hmm. he's the one guy and i always found that found that interesting i'm like oh that's an asian guy but he he was an exception to the rule i think that's so cool where it's Mm -hmm. like oh he must have had a go through a lot to be accepted. Yeah. It's like you got to learn the the language or mm-hmm. the code. There must be a different language. Or oh my god, my code my father there. learned how to speak Spanish really well because when he came to this country, one of his first girlfriends was a uh Mexican girl who strictly spoke Spanish and she Oh wow. Uh he his family is like in Orange County in like yeah. Westminster mm-hmm. and he goes to this house party randomly he speaks like barely any english mostly vietnamese yeah and he meets the he says he meets this beautiful mexican girl there and she doesn't really speak english either Mm -hmm. she predominantly speaks spanish but somehow Mm -hmm. they hit it off and he ends up moving to mexico with her and he lives there for an entire year and my grandmother would drive from orange county to the border of mexico to give him vietnamese food when he missed home and one day he and that girl broke up he comes back to the u.s goes back to orange county and she's like running around orange county trying to find him like no i want to like get back together and that's how i found out how found out how my father spoke spanish damn 
So he literally... He was about that he, life. He literally embraced th- the culture I by moving to Mexico. I think I inherited his love of Mexican people. I truly do. Really? He was that down. He was for the down. Cause. And I didn't... How re- good is his Spanish? Was it It slang? was pretty fucking good. It was like passable. I think for someone who is a Vietnamese immigrant who like struggles with English, yeah. for him to pick up some Spanish is, in my mind, amazing. Yeah. Because he used to work in construction and a lot of his co-workers were Mexican. So mm-hmm. he'd be like... Like, oh, like, hola, amigo, and, like, very, Just like... like, street slang. Like, yeah, street slang, street, and, like, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. like, passable, like, small sentences. Hey, que onda? Que pasa? What's going yes, on? Yes, and then he would, like, pick up his coworkers who didn't have a car. Mm-hmm. And so he would, like, pick them up for work and then drop them off at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And I always just, like, I was like, huh, that's interesting. My dad knows some Spanish. You know, and then yeah. finally they told me the story. So now I think I have like a brother or sister in Mexico somewhere That's that so we probably crazy. don't know about. You ever think of this? Like, cause you, you, you know, you're pretty well versed in podcasting. You've done it a while now. I you, ever, you ever think that there's, what if there's like cholos that watch, like what if they mm-hmm. were to watch this yeah. episode or see like yeah. one uh, episode you're on? Do you ever think about who's actually watching your content? I I just I always assume I, it's like a white guy just because from <laughs> like I used to it can't just always be a white guy. I know I there's I a get lot it. of Latinos <laughs> yes, and yes, like, yeah yes. there's a lot of Asians but no but you ever because I used to work uh f- like as their social media per intern I like know the numbers so like, I always assume it's a white person but like hey if you're a cholo specifically a cholo not just like any Mexican man but a cholo. Uh, yeah, I fuck with you heavy. And I'm really sad that no Mexican man wanted me as a uh, and, uh, As well as I do, too. I, I got nothing but respect for I love my Latinos Mexican and Latinas. Yeah, They're so welcoming yeah. and loving. Well, you're in L.A. It's kind of like sooner or later, yeah. you're, you're going to have to learn cultural aspects of the whole you know what i'm saying they have like, a beautiful culture as well yeah. i love how family oriented their they food are. is just the best yeah the the food the oh my food god is, is just delicious. some of the best ever like yeah. i feel so happy and i feel like i melt inside when someone calls me mija like, oh, oh yeah i just feel like i'm part of my like my inner child just got healed I'm or like, like oh, even when they yeah. call me coreano or something yeah. i'm like oh okay i love when they call me china too I'm oh, like, they yes, call you I china? china. oh <laughs> they yes. do yeah. They call you China? Yeah, for oh. a long time. They're just like, oh, that's what like we call Chinese people. Like, okay, cool. Or Chino. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ch- I'm not Chino, but Chino yeah. Loco. Oh, are, were you Chino <laughs> Loco? <laughs> I feel like that's yeah, a story yeah, yeah. in of its own. <laughs> no, no. no, I like I've had some scary stories when I lived mm-hmm. more like towards Echo Park. So yeah. like where uh early two thousand where I'm because I, I fresh from uh, Arizona, I moved yeah. y- out here um in my brother's apartment with like all these skaters and mm-hmm. stuff and it was a hard time. And I just remember, like, oh, there's this is this is different. I gotta learn. Like, there's mm-hmm. a a code of the street thing here. Yeah. Like, wh- you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, definitely. I, I had to learn real quick. Like, yeah. don't go out past this time. Don't be skating past this mm-hmm. time. You know. And it was like I had to learn quick. Like, okay, mm-hmm. this is this is not like what I'm used to. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn real quick. Yeah. Because if you don't, you you know that would be bad. You know. Yeah. You have to learn. But uh, it always fascinated me. Like like. Because although I knew, I saw it more down there, but it's mm-hmm. like, it just, it fascinates me that that still exists, that they, they, they're they that loyal to like a certain street or yeah. cause when it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like definitely. When it's like the city owns <laughs> all the streets and properties, mm-hmm. you know? But it's just like, it's just the code. It's the code they live by and yeah. you got to respect it. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So we're already, de- we're already past an hour. We're too, we're too, wow, we're, oh, look we're, at that. We're wrapping it up. I mean, well, you. Th- I want to thank you all for coming early. Mm-hmm. So this is a rarity. Um, so look, can we can we do this, end it by like c- promoting um, some of the stuff you're doing, yeah. podcasting or merch or mm-hmm. anything, or even mm-hmm. like if you, uh, if St- Steve, Stephen Blue Eyes has f- future shows mm-hmm. that you wanted to plug for, you know. Yeah, uh, on honestly, I've behalf. been chilling. I haven't really been doing much. The only place you really can find me now is OnlyFans.com slash teen. Uh, link is in my bio. What about cast- podcasting? I actually took a step back from all of that. Unfortunately, my grandfather, I found out a month ago that he was in stage four cancer. I'm we sorry. It like developed really quickly. We didn't know. And he oh. passed away oh, a sorry. week ago. Oh. So I really took some time to just be with my family recently. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. good. Yeah. Um, well, you showed up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I did my morning when I uh, found the news. But now I'm just kind of trying to live as well as I can to honor him. I just know he wouldn't have had wanted me to kind of like sulk 
in it. Right. He, he was like a really big advocate for like, go live your life and be happy and do what you want. So I'm trying mm-hmm. to live by that a lot. Okay. So, um, are you, so are you taking a hiatus from King of the Sting after dark as well? Yeah, I am no longer doing podcasts anymore. Oh, wow. I'm trying to reevaluate my life right now. I'm in like this weird transition. So you're period. in a transitional period, yes, which is absolutely, I'm kind of like going through something similar yeah. personally as well. Like as far as, you know, I'm still going to do content, but I'm mm-hmm. trying to think like, do I even, is there a way for me to do this? Do I have to physically mm-hmm. be here? Yeah. Can I do this somewhere? You know, yeah. I don't know. Not that I'm gonna, I'm making decisions tomorrow or anything. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of evaluating like. Your options. Or like, like, can I do some, like, you know, not just this, but do other types of content where mm-hmm. it's different or I don't yeah. know, like more vlogging. I don't mm-hmm. know. But not only that, it's just like. You know, because my girl is like, it's hard to, you know, that long she's, distance is hard. It's hard, and we've it's been so keeping hard. it together. So yeah. I, it's like, I didn't realize how much of a hard time she must be having. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's there's always a time, there's already a time gap, yeah, a three hour difference. So it's like, even my sleeping schedule affects her, and so mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. And then so I'm doing everything on my part to like to arrange mm-hmm. us to meet up more, yeah. and but it would be easier to if you if know both what I'm of you yeah, were together. Dude, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I got to figure that out, too, mm-hmm. you know, but one step at a time. One step at a time, <laughs> gotta get You got to get my car first. <laughs> got to get a car first. <laughs> got to get other things. But so did you want to, um, God, we didn't even talk about your OnlyFans. Oh, I think that's fine. Yeah. Did we talk about that last time? I don't know. I don't even remember if I was on OnlyFans at that time. I think maybe, I was. Maybe. I don't. I well, can we can we can we can we give it a quick shout out, a plug? Can we plug? Yeah, it definitely. Quick? Um, it, uh, c- yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So it's onlyfans.com slash teen. It's T, I I I E E E N. But you can find all my links on my social media bio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exclusive content. Go to onlyfans.com slash <laughs> teen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always joke around mm-hmm. like. What would happen if I were to create an OnlyFans? Yeah. What type of content would you want to do? Well, I had who's the other guest that said um, my my uh, followers would be primarily uh, gay men. I feel like because she said all of my followers because mm-hmm. I have a bubble butt. Yeah. <gasps> do you? Yeah, Good I hide you. it, but yeah, it bubbles out. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, yeah, but she was saying. I feel like. Oh, her name was Kitty. <laughs> Kitty was saying that. She mm-hmm. was like, yeah, but then um, is there a way around that where? I don't think there's really a way around that, but at the same time, I feel like there's definitely not a shame in it. I uh, have an agency representing me for OnlyFans. You have an agency? Yeah. Oh, wow. What's the name uh, of the agency? It's called Unruly. Really? Yeah, so what they do is they help me set up photo shoots, kind of network with other people who are on OnlyFans. I I had no idea. And they help me. So sometimes OnlyFans will have glitches. Sometimes it shuts down randomly. Can you write Unruly? That's interesting. It's still a very much like... not unruly. Uh, OnlyFans is still very much like a, kind of a new website and it's growing very mm-hmm. quickly. So sometimes they have glitches and my agency just like helps me with all those things. Yeah. And so um, they represent a lot of men who are making a lot of really good money. Granted, there are a lot of gay men following them, but they don't really care because they're making a bunch of a fuck ton of money. Oh, so like there's this guy it's named. A par- it's a part of it. Yeah, it's a part of it when you're a man, and I think for the most part, people don't really care anymore. I think there was definitely a stigma if you're a straight man on uh, OnlyFans for a while, but and now that's it fine. seems like Is that's fine normal. now. Yeah, I think most people on OnlyFans like have just accepted that. Like, hey, that's a part of Would it. Would I need like a abs and a six pack? No, I feel as like well as my bubble butt or. Your bubble butt probably will help. I that's won't lie. That's a selling to you. point. That probably would be a selling point. If that's like. Your big hitter, your money maker, that might be it, but you don't have to. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. Ha- would I have to wear thongs? No, you could do whatever you want to do, Stevie. I know a guy who does magic on OnlyFans. Really? Yeah, there. I had a uh, subscriber for about a year who would tell me like, "Oh, yeah, it's really cool. You're doing OnlyFans. I hope you know, like, you don't have to." This is like the very beginning of me doing OnlyFans. Yeah. He's like, "Don't feel pressured to do anything you don't want to do. I'm on OnlyFans too, and I do magic." I don't do any what if I, I just do, do magic. What if I implement my butt, mm-hmm. but I do like, yeah, like just like, 
You could. Like, just have the butt facing the mm-hmm. camera, and I could do, yeah. like, just do butt dances. If you wanted, you could put, like, <laughs> you could put this on OnlyFans. You could put podcasts on OnlyFans. Really? Yeah, so you could put it, anything you so want on OnlyFans. So it's varied. You could, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You could do all kinds of different things. It doesn't yeah. have to be, have a sexual context or yeah, anything, like, or uh, physical context. I believe DJ Khaled has an OnlyFans, and he just talks about, like, his business ventures on there. Really? Yeah, you do whatever you want, OnlyFans. The only thing is, how does uh, that differ? No, Hold up, we're gonna finish yeah. up here. How does it differ from Patreon? Um, I think it doesn't. I feel like depending on what type of content you do, Patreon makes more sense. Okay. Because OnlyFans takes a twenty percent cut, and I know uh, Patreon takes ten or eight, oh. something like that. Yeah, but it it's one of those things where if you are a sex worker or you're trying to sell like sexy photos of yourself, you can't do that on Patreon. So you pay that like high cut to OnlyFans mm-hmm. because you can't do it anywhere else. Right, right. So right. that's the appeal of OnlyFans to sex it's, it's workers. It's more, yeah, it's more geared towards Whereas that. if you're doing right. something like a podcast, I think you're better off with yeah, a Patreon. Right, yeah, right, right, right. All right. Well, I didn't know that was yeah. going on. Thanks for. But if you want your bubble butt somewhere, like OnlyFans, no, probably no, no. Is no the this place. is all hypotheticals. I, yeah. you know, I don't know how my girl would feel as well mm-hmm. if I have my butt out there. To, uh, but what if Stephen Yoon asked right you for it? What is it come again? What if Stephen Yoon asked for your bubble butt? He's like, yeah. hey, I had a really great time with you at dinner. You're really nice, really cool. Um, so I just, uh, I noticed you had a bubble butt. You're and reversing it on me. Yeah, like. Um, I know you have well, a girlfriend let's, let's and everything, save that but for part three, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me absolutely. Think about that. Let me, yeah, let me think take your time. That. Take your time. Let me think about that one. <laughs> uh, all right, dude. It was always an honor having Thank you. Thank you for having you me. Do you want to give any more shout outs or oh, what about your Instagram? Let's. Oh yeah, Instagram yeah. is teen, or you could type in my name. Mm-hmm. It's C A T T I E N L E. Okay, yeah. so again, thanks for tuning in for another episode. If you want to best support this platform go to patreon.com slash stevie weeby i also do another podcast with my brother jeremiah watkins scissor bros. scissor bros and we drop those episodes weekly oh we have a new clips channel scissor bro clips so but we go go to youtube.com slash scissor bros but then youtube.com slash scissor bro clips and so those are daily clips okay and uh, there's also a Patreon for Scissor Bros, too, where we do Warzone content, um, interactive Zooms. So go check that out. Um, my website's still kind of in the gray area. I'm still working on it. It's still kind of not online yet. Uh, again, so I'm still working on it. I need to revamp it. Uh, StevieWeebyBandCamp.com for all my music. Um, go to, uh, if you want to send any packages or mail, anything like that, send all your stuff to... Uh, the P.O. Box at 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. One last thing. Do you think Stephen Yoon would ever do this podcast? I feel like he would be a fool not to do it. You heard it first at, on the Stephen Stephen Yoon, Weeby if you're show. watching this, please come on give the Stephen Give him a Weeby message. Show. Stephen, I know you're watching. And, do you um, think he's watching? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay, you know so he was a ma- he was like a talking he knows you, yeah, po- yeah. He was a talking point for yeah. about like eight percent. Someone's of the gonna send this to him. You think yeah. so? Yeah. And he'll be like, oh. And by God. someone, I mean me. Like I'm gonna send him a link, like right when this comes out. Go watch. <laughs> nope. Uh, let me give a quick uh, commercial. Go watch mm-hmm. Jordan Peele's Nope in theaters everywhere. I hope y'all enjoy it. It was a great movie. Support all of Jordan Peele's movies. I also want Jordan here one day, too. Yeah. I mean, that's more. You got to get Stephen on first, and then I think you could get Jordan. We love Jordan Peele's movies here on Mm -hmm. the Stevie Weeby Show. Go support all of Jordan Peele's movies. Dude, it was an honor having you. Thank you for having me. My buddy Skip is a trip, feeling blue like a crib. Straight for robbing a bank, letting loose from the hip. He really couldn't predict this grip was so full of angst. Him and him, we were woodpeckers, did a song and dance at bit. Oh, rodeo man in the West, you can. You're the best on the land. Too blessed to dance, do the bull with your hand. No, Skip, you can. Get that fucking bull and pull on that rope. Feeling stir crazy, maintaining against the grain. Making me want to get in a plane. The pain inside my brain never ends sustained. I'm down for the count on the ground. Train. Living today, don't give it away.
the peace and the praise the raise. Shining it down to mighty as crowns, the finest of crowns delayed. Skippy's afraid, he feels betrayed. Lift this way, can deal with shade. His fate is fate, he made the gray displayed in a charade of pain. I am not a man, I am an animal of male. I live by maritime, the law of water, about to sail. When my mother had me, I slipped out of her canal. What you call a sailing ship is near.